everybody, this is Neil Filer and I'm here with a weekly astrological message, this time from December 16th until December 26th. We have a lot happening in the sky. We have Chiron walking forward, we have Venus walking backward, we have December solstice coming up, we have a full moon in Gemini, and all kinds of other aspects that I want to talk about. But generally speaking, if I look at this time at the sky, this is, you know from the ancient times before the great religions this has been a time in the northern hemisphere of this globe that darkness and cold and night has been at its highest it is the official entering to winter and of course totally the opposite on the southern hemisphere of this earth the entry to summer but here it is the darkest coldest part of the year and through all of the northern hemisphere this has been traditionally a time that we would have light and fire festivals and i'm talking about the origin of halloween and i'm talking about the origin of hanukkah and i'm talking about the origin of christmas god is forbid you know all of these holidays were connected to the seasonal occurrences on earth and the need to ignite the light of fire and love and belief and hope at this time of darkness, this most of introspective, inward drawing times. Time that one could naturally be depressed and despair. And you know, one of my Bibles, earlier Bibles, <laughs> in, in my high school was John Ronald Rowell Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And you could learn a lot about the true affairs of men from the fairy tale of Tolkien. And I remember Gandalf going through the ranks, driving through the different lands on his fable horse, seeding hope and light and courage through the ranks as humanity understood as the races understood the amount of darkness that amassed on their borders and remembers for the remember for those of you who know Tolkien what happened to those who gave in to the darkness and despair and hopelessness that it promised this is a time to ignite the fire of love and hope in our lives in ourselves and definitely a very introspective psychological therapeutic time for us all the time that we need to understand that if we do not take our own sword our own shield our own love nobody promises nobody promises that things could actually get better it is up to us Let's, I, want to, I want to share a, an image with you. So indeed, we came too early to explore the stars, and maybe too late to explore Earth, but just in time to save it. It is on our shoulders. There is no one else. We are the heroes that we have been waiting for. That the world has been waiting for. We have been chosen. And indeed, that light is now being ignited through love and compassion and the highest forms of humanity all throughout human society. Look how much we've evolved through the turbulations of COVID and everything that ensued from it. Look how different the society of men and women is from where we were in 2019. How much more we understand and indeed how our burden became heavier with that understanding nevertheless we are the knights of light we are the wizards go spread hope through the ranks go spread love through the ranks because your actions are needed So that's like an encompassment of, you know, like I try to encompass everything that is happening in the sky, but let's go through the days. The 16th, very creative, great to do things together. I mean, 
one and one are three. It's an amazing time for new collaborances and you know partnerships and relationships. And definitely, as Venus is conjunct to Pluto at this time and goes through its retrograde and will be conjunct Pluto again as it goes out of its retrograde shadow in March. So this is something that is going to be here in waves throughout this retrograde in Capricorn. But Venus is already at its uh, 26th degree of Capricorn. It's its retrograde degree. It's already stationary and it's entering its retrograde on the 19th. And it's conjunct Pluto all of this time. So definitely there is a transformation and an introspective approach towards what it is that makes us value ourselves. Our self-esteem is drawn by what? And is that grocery list of ingredients of what makes us respect ourselves true and deep and as authentic as it can be? What is it that we bring to the table in sense of value? What is it that we can offer others in our relationships? The relationship with our most intimate partner, first of all, but any relationship generally. And how do we draw in value and money into our lives? All of these are subject to turbulation transmutation and change throughout this time. This is not a time for power struggles, although they can ensue. This is not a time to be total or obsessive about things. It is a time to step away from one's reactions, step away from one's dramatic impulses and emotions at this time and gaze at them before we actually decide how to react. On the 17th, well, actually, I don't want to say anything about the 17th. The 18th, Mercury is squaring Chiron, Mercury planet of communication, words. And intellect squares Chiron, the wounded healer. This is definitely a time for endearing communication and to watch out to hurt other people. And everybody is more sensitive at this time. <coughs> be more careful on the roads as well and then on the 19th we have Venus retrograde and Chiron moving forward we have this uh, feeling as Chiron moves forward and it trines Mars next week that really we could better address we ourselves could better address our own wounds our own deficiencies our own handicapped parts and our personalities that are there due to our personal experiences I mean we're all flawed but like a record, you know, where we are scratched is where the music is. And we're not our scratches, we're what grew out of them. So, be good gardeners regarding that. And as John Ra Ronald Rowell Tolkien used to say, we cannot, you know, control the circumstances that life throws before us only how we choose to react to them the part we choose to take in that scenario so um, 19th is also when we have the full moon in Gemini it squares Neptune it trines uh, Jupiter it gives this Gemini full moon that is usually cerebral in its influences, a much broader philosophic, spiritual kind of outlook about things. And it's definitely a time that we could have epiphanies, that we could have new ideas, that we are asked to step outside the box and look at things in a new way and update our thoughts update our ideas as Mercury trines Uranus exactly on the 20th. And then on the 21st we have December solstice. Sun enters Capricorn. 
it is an intense day. It is an intense day emotionally, but definitely it could be an amazing day to go through things together, intimately, sexually, or you know, just heighten and deepen friendships. And definitely with this Venus retrograde, and I want to talk about in Capricorn in a minute, and, and, and the fact that the Pluto conjunction is part of this retrograde cycle, and so is a sextile to Neptune that is going to happen for us. Um, gives it a much more introspective and a much more um, compassionate approach to things. I mean, we could definitely change things for the better regarding how we value ourselves and how we approach money and how we approach relationships and who we are and who we bring into that table of relationships in our lives. But it could be a time that, you know, people either go through this together or go against each other. And my advice to you is go through this together. Deepen your connections at this time. Um, and then on the 22nd, you know, we are approaching another square uh, between Saturn and Uranus. But I, I'm heading too fast. I want to talk about this um, retrograde in, in, in Capricorn. I mean, every time there's a Venus retrograde, it's a time of revolution and maybe a restart to everything that Venus retro represents in our lives. Being a Taurus, I don't like that. I want stability in everything concerning beauty and aesthetics and value and relationships in my life. <laughs> so I'm a bit averse to a Venus retrograde. Don't learn from me because this could be a time for a positive change, for a needed change. And the mantra here is whatever will be is better than what is or what was in this case. Tolerance is asked for because when the phoenix combusts into ashes and is reborn, it takes time for its flames to reach the highest brightness again. It's a cycle of death and rebirth for Venus, in a sense. Um, not the time to ask for stability in these senses as well. So, the fact that it's in Capricorn throws us to the land of career, of the work environment, the work market, and how it is we deal with the systems and laws and regulations and reality as it is, the soreness of things, not how we wished it would be, but just how it is. And it gives us a feeling that we need to cope and you know, strengthen ourselves and men up and, and take the burden with a high chin and walk forward, you know, be an adult about it, be mature about things, and responsible about things, but it doesn't mean that we feel that we want to do these things. We feel we are needed to do these things, are asked to do these things, in a sense. And as we're heading to the 22nd, we could already very much feel the uh, square between Uranus, planet of upgrade and change, and Saturn, the planet of laws and reality. And you know, if we look at humanity as a pack of wolves, you know, it is Capricorn, Saturn, organizations and laws and regulations and the work market and the economical system and governments that are the slowest wolf. And we progress in the pace of the slowest wolf around. So we feel on the one hand that there's all these laws that need to be upgraded. There's all these regulations that need to be upgraded because whatever is doesn't cut it anymore. It's not relevant anymore. Reality has changed. And it's changing at a, you know, breathtaking pace. And we need to adapt. We feel that we need to adapt. Yet, stability is still needed. We still need to deal with this reality, with that regulations, with this system that is the slowest wolf, that is, 
you know, of, of, of dire need of an update. We understand that we live already in a much more updated society that can handle things much better than it does. Yet, we still have to deal with the delinquencies of the present system because we need to put a roof up above our heads and food on our tables. We're still slaves to the old system and we can definitely feel it by the 22nd as the moon joins that square between <coughs> uh, uh, Saturn and Uranus and T-squares them. Um, and at the 24th, when this square is at its exact degree. The 25th, we have Mars trining Chiron exactly. This is the therapeutic understanding that it is up to us to change things. It is up to us to heal ourselves and heal our societies and heal our surroundings. It is also the day that Venus and uh, Pluto are exactly conjunct again. On the 26th, Mercury sextiles Neptune. So if you need inspiration, if you need to connect to Goddess, if you need to, you know, um, have inspiration and, and, and creativity, it's an amazing day for that. So this is about everything for private readings, for courses and private lessons. All the details are at the screen at the end. I want to thank you for sharing this. I want to thank you for commenting on this. This is Nia Phila. May we all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.